Hi guys, Lazy here. I thought I'd take this opportunity to show you an awesome project a friend of mine's been working on. It's a horror story narration, much like my videos, but it's also very cinematic. It comes from the YouTubers Distant Signal, and it really is a treat, especially in the run up to Halloween. If you enjoy the video, then make sure to go over to their channel since they have more of these in the works. You can find links down below. Now, without further ado, this is Darkness Calls. This must have been, God, 15 years ago. My fiance Julie and myself, we finally decided to move to Los Angeles to look for work. And we always heard it was nice in SoCal. But when we got here, the neighborhood wasn't as nice as we were hoping and neither were the job prospects. Two months after we moved here, the Santa Anas were blowing. It was drier than stale bread in hell. Dead leaves were everywhere. Assholes were starting fires all over the county, and even though it was fall, it was hot. That wind it was so hot. We rented a duplex. It was a little run down, but nice. It was made in the 40s. Old, but it had character. The back door led to an alley that was just wide enough to have us hoping to grow when summer came. But Julie... She didn't like it, always complaining about how the neighborhood was so noisy, and she missed everyone back home. She stayed inside all the time with Cooper, our dumb as a thumb pit bull. It was just so depressing, you know? We were in LA. I mean, I'd ask if she wanted to go to the beach, or, or, or if she wanted to go to the movies, something, anything. All she would do was just give this awful shrug. She was shrugging off more than the idea. It was the whole city. The more homesick she got, the more distant we got. I found what I thought was a good response. <laughs> Drinking. It got to the point where I'd come home from a bender and just sit in my car rather than go in. Sometimes, I'd fall asleep in it. Early into our third week in Hollywood, the wind started blowing really hard. Julie and I got into a fight about me going out all the time, and, and I was still about to go out. When I saw this look on her face, she looked, well, she looked afraid. And that really wasn't like her. So I simmered down and started making some dinner, winning an argument between her and myself in my head. Halfway through chopping the vegetables and most of the way through a bottle of wine, we both heard something moving in that alleyway. I didn't think that much of it because the wind was blowing so hard. Then I realized that the wind had died down. What I was hearing was the water boiling behind me. Julie looked at me, leaned forward on the couch and tightened her robe. Cooper stood up and let out a low, suspicious growl at the window in her living room. Then the noise came again. Footsteps. Outside. Julie's eyes didn't leave the window. Did you hear that, she asked. I told her it was probably something falling from a tree, or, or a skunk, just disagreeing to disagree. She just shook her head and insisted that someone was out there. That's when the door in the back of the kitchen started to rattle. Thank God the landlord never got around to fixing it. I've been stuck since we got here. I grabbed a flashlight and decided to go around from the front to the alley to see if I could catch whoever or whatever was back there.
going down the front steps, I can hear someone around the corner walking away. When I go to turn on the flashlight, it flickers for a second and then dies. My lucky day. I open the side gate anyway and I can't see a thing. The only light was this weak one above the back door. Who's there? I shouted. Nothing. I stared at that darkness for what felt like an hour. When I get closer to the living room window, I can see Julie whispering to someone on the phone. I assumed it was police, but even if it was, they'd never get here in time to do anything. So I go further down the alley. And after my eyes adjust, I begin to see an outline of someone dressed all in black, taking deep breaths. We stare at each other. The only thing between us is that light. I don't know what I'm thinking, but I move towards the guy and he takes something shiny from his waist. A knife. For the first time in my life, I am really scared. This guy means to kill me. He could kill me. He starts to come at me and then he stops. Frozen. I was so focused on this guy that I didn't see Cooper follow me out. His, his deep growl and sharp teeth are why this guy is having second thoughts. Now it's Cooper and this guy, staring at each other, waiting for the other to make the first move. It's Cooper who attacks first. But before he can get him, the man hops up and opens the fence. I run back into the house to check on Julie. But she isn't in the living room. So I check the kitchen, but instead of her, I find that the knife I was using to chop is missing. And the back door is swinging open. So I started thinking maybe there are two guys. Did one sneak into the house? I creep towards our bedroom. I'm afraid of what I'm going to find. It was Julie. She was sitting on the bed, clutching the knife from the kitchen. Later, we decided to, to order in and turn on something funny, but it was really more for the noise. Anything to drown out the wind, it would have just happened. Unsurprisingly, the cops never showed, but some of our neighbors did. I, I guess they heard me shouting and wanted to know if we were okay. They saw that we were watching a comedy and invited themselves in. They brought over some chicken. It was pretty salty, but I loved it. Afterwards, I asked Julie what made her think someone was outside before, and that it wasn't just the wind having its way with her imagination. She told me that for the entire week, she had been hearing strange noises coming from all around the house late at night. Dogs were barking at something. I asked, why, why didn't she say anything? She said I wouldn't have heard it if she had since I was always drinking dawned on me that that guy in the alley must have been casing this house, probably our neighbors, hoping to use the wind as cover. After that night, I decided to get some help for my drinking, and Julie promised to get out there and make some new friends, first with those, those really nice people who came over. After all, it's easy to feel out of place in this world if you don't try to get to know it first.
Hey guys, Lazy here, and thank you very much for watching. Make sure to check out Distant Signal's YouTube channel by following the links in the description, or by clicking on the screen right now. They make some awesome, really professional content, and I thought it would just be cool to show them to all of you guys. I'll also have my Halloween special up in a couple of days, so stay tuned for that. Stay spooky. And remember, the best things happen in the dark.